Hey guys, what's happening? Thanks for tuning in and coming back. I appreciate it. And if you haven't yet, hit subscribe. I uh, hope you'll like the video. So maybe at the end you can like it and share it and comment. But uh, for sure, subscribe. We got a lot of videos I'm working on. I've been doing some vlogs, which I, I hope you're liking. Uh, I'm learning a lot and I'm having fun trying to figure out how to make them interesting. Uh, but I'm also going to continue doing videos like this where I'm doing sort of tutorial type things around products that I use and love. So today I am talking about Roar HDR and Luminar, both by Skyloom, and uh, they're both products that I love. I did a video, I think it was November of last year, so six, seven months back, and that was basically, you know, um, Aurora HDR or Luminar, which one is right for me? I think that's the name of the video, and in that video, I essentially talked about some of the major differences between the two and what you might get out of one that you don't get out of the other. And so this video is sort of a follow-on to that. I continue to get the question, like, you know, what do you think, Jim? Should I get Aurora or should I get, uh, should I get Luminar? And while my short answer is I think you need them both, it does depend on what you're trying to do. So I'm sort of appending that video by creating this one and sort of adding on to it because one of the things I haven't really talked about is what do I, I actually do in each product and why do I use one instead of the other? I've had people say, you know, hey, talk to me. Kind of what? Are, you know, what do you do in one? Why do you choose one product versus the other for different situations? And um, you know, what are the boundaries uh, between them, if there are any? And so uh, the truth is, I'm kind of fluid in terms of what I do and uh, when I approach a photo and what I want to do, and that often sort of informs which product I go with. Now, to back up, I frequently, and by frequently, I mean almost always, shoot uh, a three exposure bracket when I'm out firing shots. And so uh, I have the opportunity to go into a RAW HDR with all three exposures and make a true tone mapped HDR by blending those exposures in Aurora. Um, however, there are definitely times when I'll come back and I'll look at the three and think, well, I don't really need HDR. It's not like the light was such that, oh my gosh, you got to have HDR so you can expose for the shadows and things like that. Um, so many times I'll just take the, let's say the middle exposure. Usually that's the one that's the most balanced. Sometimes it's the brighter one, but um, generally I'll take the middle exposure and just take that to Luminar by itself and not do the tone mapping and sort of go for the HDR look and instead kind of go for a more traditional single exposure. And Luminar is great at that. Now you can also do single exposures in Aurora. So this is where it starts to get blurry and the truth is, it just depends. Uh, there's not a single right answer about, oh, you gotta have this one or you gotta have that one. Um, a couple things come to mind. If you do not shoot HDR, and uh, that is fire brackets and merge them into HDR, and all you ever do is shoot single exposures, I would probably just get Luminar, and that's because it's got a, a, a copious amount of filters. You can do so many things with it, and you don't really need the tone mapping engine in Aurora. You don't need the ability to combine those exposures, and you can do other creative things like double exposures or adding textures or putting in a new sky. You can do all that in Luminar anyway, so if you only ever shoot single exposures, I'd probably get Luminar. If you, however, go out and shoot brackets all the time and like to do HDRs, but also like single exposures, in other words, if you're like me, that's where it gets a little more complicated, and that's because, as I said earlier, I use both for different things. So let's dive in and talk about that. Um, I'm gonna start in Roar HDR. So this is a three exposure bracket, and I think that if you're interested in HDR and you're interested in the tone mapping al algorithm, which can give you that, I don't know what to call it other than the HDR look, where you can sort of crunch up the details and make kind of a surreal HDR, not something I do very much. I've done plenty of uh, plenty of it in the past, but I no longer do that. But if that's something of interest, then Aurora is definitely the one for you. Um, if you can afford it, get both. But you know, again, I'm, that's you know, you end up spending money on uh, things, and you want to make sure you use them. So. Um, a question I always ask myself, how's the light balanced? Uh, this photo, for example, it's a three exposure HDR. I brought it in, merged it into H, uh, in Aurora, merged it to HDR and came up with this photo. Now, it's already edited. Um, that's the middle exposure. Now, admittedly, that middle exposure, it's bright enough. I don't need HDR. It's not like uh, it's necessarily serving a, um, a technical purpose. Um, by creating an HDR and making it look like that, it's it's serving more of an artistic purpose, and that is, I am amping up the details a little bit. So, generally, what I did here, not generally, what I did do here is I went into basic panel, made some contrast, HDR enhance, a little bit of smart tone. I went into color, gave it a little contrast and a little vibrance. I went into the polarizing filter and just 
soften the white, uh, the brighter parts a little bit, and then HDR details boost, right? I gave that a little bit of boost with the medium details. There's before and there's after. Now, this is where, if you like that surreal kind of crunchy look, that you can start doing these kind of things and getting these more really crunchy looking HDR type photos, right? So I can just jack all that up and you get this really heavily detailed, super surreal photo. Not my look, I've done it plenty, I don't judge. Um, not what I want to do now. So, you know, I left the medium, I think, at about 40. Um, and, you know, that looks fine to me without being crunchy. But if you're going for that crunchy kind of look, then Aurora is probably the place to go. You can stack some filters and sort of duplicate that look in Luminar with a single exposure, but it's not quite the same. Um, so that's a question. If you're really in, into the detail amplification that you get out of um, tone mapping, uh, in other words, the HDR look, then Aurora is probably for you. Um, so let's go into Luminar with the same photo. And here's the same photo edited slightly differently. But again, there's the single exposure, the middle exposure, I should say, from the bracket. It, this one is a single exposure. And there it is with some basic Luminar edits. So, you know, I did some basic stuff in the uh, Develop tab. I shoot raw, to be clear, but this is a JPEG that I use for most of my videos. Therefore, it says Develop, not Raw Develop. Just clarifying. Um, there's some structure, a little bit of tone, saturation of vibrance, and then uh, HSL to kind of cool off those greens because they were looking a little electric like that. Um, and that's the thing you tend to find in Aurora, you get amplified colors a bit via the tone mapping and merging all the exposures. So I'm often having to tone those down a bit. Um, here they were just too bright based on the other adjustments I made. So um, you can get a similar kind of HDR look here if you want. Just start jacking up that structure, and then all of a sudden you've got this crunchier looking photo. You know, you can say, "Oh, I want to boost it too," and now you got sort of this toxic looking, um, you know, kind of ugly photo. To be honest, uh, in my opinion, right? You know, so again, I don't want to sound judgy. I've been there, and if it's what you want to do, then you know, cool, do it. I, I don't care. Um, but that's a tamer edit than that. Uh, this one, if you look at it, the light is a little bit more evenly distributed. And what I mean by that is there's less contrast. And this is Aurora, and that's HDR. Over here, I've added a little bit of contrast, and I don't have quite the distribution of light because I didn't merge multiple exposures, which basically, basically is going to balance out the light. That's kind of the goal for me when I blend HDRs, is get that light balanced so I have sort of a neutral starting ground, and then I can adjust as I see fit. So, that's some of the um, ways that I use one versus the other. Now, here's another thing. Um, what you do not get in Aurora that you do get over here in Luminar is 50 filters. So you have sun rays, which you've heard about ad nauseum. I'm not going to put sun rays on this one. Um, you've got the matte look if you want to come in and do kind of a vintage kind of look. Um, you've got hue shift, um, something I don't really use very much, but photo filter. Um, it's kind of like a hue shift. You basically pick a hue and then you drag the saturation slider. And as you can see, you get all these different color effects. And they may or may not look good. In fact, a lot of them look kind of bad. But um, something like that is almost kind of sepia looking. And if you're going for a faded, hey, I'm, and this is on Route 66 in New Mexico. So if you're going for the, hey, I'm in the Southwest US, it's hot, it's summer, it's kind of a vintage photo because look at the place, it's old, it's abandoned. I want that vintage kind of faded look. Hey, you can do that pretty quickly and easily in Luminar with a few filters like photo filter. So that's an idea about how things can be different and what you get out of Luminar that you don't get out of Aurora. Now, uh, Aurora has, I think, a dozen or 14, 15 filters. Luminar has 50. So it's not a one-to-one -one comparison. You're not, this is not apples to apples. They're two great products really built for different things. But um, you do have 50 filters in Luminar, therefore you just inherently have more flexibility. So let me do another photo. Uh, let me get, um, let me get it one second. Okay, so this is a two exposure HDR um, that was one dark and one light, and that was really all I needed. Uh, this was shot in Carmel, California. Um, there's the uh, the brighter exposure, and there's the HDR. So um, what I did here, as you can see, I uh, I did a little bit of uh, HDR in hand, and by, well, 88, really not that little. Um, basically, it's bringing up the details, but if you look at the before and after, um, it also amps up the sky a bit. Now, I brightened it because of smart tone, uh, and I made some temperature and tint adjustments. 
Did a little bit of color work here, just a vibrance and color contrast, and then I added structure, and that's where you're getting some of that crunchiness in the sidewalk and um, in the storefront. Like, it looks cool to me in the sign and in the sidewalk. I like that look, but if you look at the sky, the sky doesn't really look that good. Um, HSL, I brought the orange tint down, or saturation down, and the blue saturation down. Let me show you the before. It was a little more colorful than I wanted. Um, here's a cool thing you can do in um, Aurora, and that is you can just go put one of the original skies from one of your original um, uh, photos from your bracket set in. So you just say add a new layer, and you add new HDR bracket layer, and then you choose whichever one you want. So I'm going to choose the plus two exposure, and it'll drop that as a layer on top of your base photo, and then you just go get your brush, and I'm going to do this quickly, but you just, uh, you just paint that sky from that um, original exposure in, and you'll notice I'm getting a much tamer sky because that's an unedited sky. It's also darker, so I'm going to go ahead while I'm at it and just paint it in over here because I don't really care for my viewers to be looking at that side of the photo with that little bit of the building and the, the fence that's in shadow, but what I did want to do is kind of clean up that sky and also, um, let me show you my masking, kind of sloppy. Um, I'm always in a hurry in our videos. But let me show you the before without that. If you notice around the top here, it's a lot more halo-y, and that's something you get with the tone mapping um, if you're not careful, especially when you're pushing, um, oops, I'm on the wrong layer, especially when you're pushing contrast and things like that. It's just gonna create that kind of look. But by painting in the original sky, I get a tamer looking sky, which to me looks a lot better in this photo. But I also got rid of the halo, and now it just looks like a normal sky. It doesn't look like I just blended an exposure, which I did. Um, now, you may or may not like the colors or the detail amplification and all that in the foreground, and that's cool. You don't have to like it. But that's, um, let me show you the before, right? Same sky and after, right? Before and after. So that's something cool you can do in Aurora. And um, that's uh, something I like to do because sometimes skies, I like skies to be kind of smooth, especially at blue hour. I don't really want to jack it up and get a lot of detail in a soft kind of buttery sky. I want it to be pretty. So let me show you the same photo in Luminar. Here it is, again, edited a, a bit differently. Develop filter, made a few adjustments, a little bit with tone, just smart tone. Added a tiny bit of accent AI, saturation of vibrance, and then structure, I just went and painted into the bottom of the photo. Um, what I should do is go add HSL and take down that blue because the sky is just too blue. So I'm going to take the saturation down a little bit. Um, and I could also take down the luminous just to darken it a bit. Um, and I think that looks pretty good. So uh, let me take that filter off. Let me show you the before sky. Kind of getting to be that electric blue that happens at blue hour if you're not careful. And there, it looks a little bit better. Now, in this situation, a different edit. So I, I'm not trying to compare filter to filter. I'm just talking about different things you can do in one versus the other and why you might want to do them. Um, in this one, I brought up the details a bit more in the actual restaurant and the pavement, but I put in a new sky because the sky was a mess. Uh, over here in Luminar, um, I can't change the sky. Well, I'm sorry. I didn't need to change the sky. I can change it because I can just add a new layer and do the same thing. Um, but I brought up the uh, the details not quite as much here. And the other thing I might would do is take down some of this orange because it's getting a little too bright there. So I think that looks better. Again, a different outcome, a different edit. Uh, and that's part of the beauty is you can experiment. What I didn't do here is darken that edge like I've done um, in the previous photo. So maybe I can just go add filter and I can just get exposure. If I could find it, where's exposure? I don't really use exposure. Oh, it's down at the bottom, isn't it? Yeah, I can use exposure, and I can just say, I wanna darken that, and I think that looks good. Now, the whole photo is dark, but I'm about to change that, and I'm gonna come up here to my, uh, da, da, da. no, I'm not. Um, I'm gonna, <laughs> I forget what I'm doing. Um, I'm gonna get the brush, I'm gonna get a gradient mask, I'm just gonna drag it in over here, kinda like that, and I just darken the expo probably a little too far. Let me get back. I don't want to mess up that sky. And I'm going to tilt it a little bit. Something like that. Um, and that's probably a little too much. Uh, whoops. Too bright. Uh, something like that. Um, so that's a good way to sort of darken that edge with the gradient mask without having to paint it in. You just slide the gradient in from the side as opposed to the top down. Uh, anyway, so there's the before and there's the after. A nice edit, I like it. I'd probably do more to it, uh, but that's not really what I'm doing in this video. Um, in Aurora, 
a nice edit. I like it. I don't know if I would do more to it or not. I kind of like the HDR look in the the building here more so than I like what I did here in Luminar. So for me, Aurora kind of wins in this case, but that's only because I kind of like a little bit of crunchiness there. You may not. That's cool. Um, so how do you decide between the two? I, I don't know. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Uh, gosh, that was helpful, Jim. Appreciate it. Um, I don't really know how you decide because they're both really good at different things. Luminar's is great big list of filters. Aurora's is great tone mapping engine. I like to use them both together. And so maybe to go back to the beginning, what do I do? Um, it depends on the photo, but for my HDRs, about 90, yeah, probably 90% of the time, I'll build the HDR and do basic edits in Aurora. And then I'll pop over to, Luminar, uh, over to Luminar and do some of my color enhancement. I prefer, because of all the 50, the 50 filters in Luminar, to do color enhancement there. I just think you have more, well, I don't think, you actually do have more flexibility because of uh, things like filter masking makes it a little bit easier because you don't have to add layers. And also just all the filters, you can do so many things. Doesn't mean you can't edit photos completely in Aurora. Of course you can, I've done that plenty of times. I'm just telling you what I do. I build my bracket set, uh, merge them in Aurora, make some adjustments, take it to Luminar to finish it off. I balance between the two. Sometimes I'll go start to finish in Aurora. Sometimes I'll say, it's a single exposure, the lighting's fine, I'll just take it into Luminar and just play with it there and don't need the tone mapping and the HDR stuff. So it's all personal preference, my friends. I don't even know if this is helpful at this point. Um, thanks for watching, I guess. Um, I, I would say this about Luminar. Um, Luminar is gonna get a dam at some point. It's supposed to be this year. Uh, and when it does get the dam, Digital Asset Manager, Library Catalog, whatever you wanna call it, um, it's gonna give you the ability to use Luminar as sort of the center of your editing universe, which means um, you can already use Luminar, put your photo in there, and then use um, Aurora as a plugin to it, and you can do that in reverse. However, if you have Luminar with the DAM, your library is effectively attached to Luminar, it's gonna operate more clearly and more easily, I think, as the center of your universe. Something to think about. If you're looking to get off the subscription model with Adobe, that whole, um, uh, damn thing when Luminar comes out with it is going to be interesting. I don't know what it looks like. I haven't seen it. So when I do see it and can talk about it, I'll be sharing videos. Believe me. Um, so there we go. There's a video kind of talking about the two products. Um, hope it helps, I guess. Anyway, um, I guess that's it, my friends. I've talked about a lot of stuff here. Showed you a couple of different photos, some different edits and different options and ideas. I hope it helps. I hope it works for you. If you have any questions, just leave them down below. I'll do my best to answer. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that like button. Share it with your friends. Thanks for coming by. I really appreciate it. You guys have a great day and adios.